The decision to bring in the robot was, was mainly driven by the, the skills gap. We're struggling to find employees. We had large, large orders that had been coming in. And that just seemed like the logical step based on everything that had been going on. Just trying to keep up with technology. And it, you know, it freed up a lot of our really skilled operators to work with new employees, get more involved in trainings. My name is Ian Gillis. I'm one of the owners of AMI Machining here in Middleborough, Massachusetts. So the company was founded here in 1995 by my father, Charlie Gillis, and his partner, Paul Singley. We focus mainly on aesthetic medical technologies. We started off making a lot of extrusions, front, front panels, aluminum casings, things like that. That was how we really got our start. That was where our first house machine came from. But we're a job shop. We make all kinds of products. So we got about 40 employees now. We got 25 machines, 25 milling machines, I should say, and nine lathes. And we run two shifts, day and night. This is our first robot arm. We got the arm with the intentions of doing thousands of parts. Soon we figured out with the ease of setting up the robot that if we had a 50 part run, a 100 part run, we could get that robot running those parts quickly enough that it's beneficial for us to do it that way and have our operator go and run or set up another machine. So the robot arm has a lot more versatility to it than I initially was aware of. Right now we have one guy that programs it and we have two guys that are training for the programming. And everyone's excited to use it. They see the ease of use and everyone wants to be a part of it. People do say that the robot's gonna take my job, but I personally see it as the robot's helping me out here. When I program the robot, I try to program it fully automated, as much automated as I can, using the probe to check the tools, to check tool heights, offsets, making sure that the tools are there, just doing as much as it can so I don't have to worry about it. While the robot is running automated, I'm able to do other setups, I'm able to run other jobs, I'm able to help anyone else here that needs my help. So because the robot is doing that, making parts while I go to lunch, while I'm at the bathroom, while I'm anywhere, it's making parts and I'm still able to do other things that I wouldn't be able to if the robot wasn't helping. People see that it's, it's not it's not taking any work from them, it's just making their job easier. As opposed to running multiple machines or tending to multiple machines, you know, now that kind of takes one machine off of an operator's plate and he's now able to learn. If you're looking at it from the point of view of an operator, you know, he's now able to get training on other machines or on other jobs while that machine is now kind of running what he would have typically just been standing there operating. I really see the future of the business trending more towards the robotical side of it. It's given our operators a ton of opportunity to work on different things, work, you know, help to bring in more kind of complex projects. You know, they're not tied up with the, the you know, the day to day of just kind of operating the machines. And Haas has been a huge part of that. That machine, it's, it's been incredibly easy for us to use. It's been super user friendly. All of our operators have kind of taken a spin through there. And it, you know, it just, it's come to them really simply. So it's been a great asset to AMI.